So the Asei Tovs are number one. Stay away from that four-letter word called debt. Stay away, number one. Number two, if need be, keep it simple. If you don't have to, I don't say you have to. But understand the difference between what you need and what you want. Step three, get educated. Laman Hashem, get educated. Don't come into marriage without that. I want to give you now a few things you shouldn't do, and I will close with that. Number one is credit cards are not your friends. Credit cards have a great place in this world. They do. Never, ever think that a credit card is your ticket to freedom. It isn't. The tax man cometh. The credit card bill comes. And all they want is that you should not be able to pay it. Credit card companies don't make money off of people who pay their bill at the end of the month. They make money off of people who don't. Don't be one of the people they make money off. Never spend a penny on a credit card. If I was you, I would advise you not to have a credit card when you first get married. I know you got to build up credit and all that good stuff. Don't use credit cards when you first get married. First, train yourself in financial responsible spending. And then we can talk about credit cards. You phase them in slowly. Don't let credit cards become your habit. And don't spend money on a credit card that you don't know how you're going to pay it off. Okay? That's one thing Blue Anne I've never done in my life. And believe me, I had periods of my married life where I was living on a shoestring budget. But I didn't ever spend a penny on a credit card that I didn't have. Don't do it. Don't give your credit card to somebody else. Because he promised you that if he can open a credit card in your name, and then he will be able to get you X number of, and he'll make $1,000 because he's going to get you back miles. Don't do it. Laman Hashem. Don't do it. Number two, very important thing. You want to become financially independent? The best way to do it is to recognize nobody owes you anything. Your parents don't owe you anything. Your in-laws don't owe you anything. If they give you something, that's beautiful. That's amazing. That's so kind. It's so nice. Parents who do that, who are able to do it, it's amazing. People, who, Parents who can't do it and don't do it, that's also amazing. Parents who, who you know... They, 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 they could do it and they don't do it. It's also amazing. It's fine. It's fine if they do and it's fine if they don't. Nobody owes you anything. You owe it. You know what money is called in Lashon HaKodesh? It's called Damim, blood. You know why? Because you can't live on blood transfusions. You need your own blood. You've got to generate your own blood. Don't look elsewhere. If you can assimilate that into your brains, it will be really good for you in the long term as far as getting to financial independence. Number three is, you're going to have chasana money. I hope you will after you get married. Do yourself a favor before you just give it over to your chasana's friend who has a deal that he's putting together because he's learning and working part-time. Don't. Don't give your money to anybody unless you know why and how and what and when. Don't just stick your money somewhere because you think it'll be good for you. Somebody's promising you a high return. Don't invest money until you know what you're doing. It's not hard to get. It's really not hard to get educated. Get educated. That's all. I can't tell you really much more.